training course. This is going to be a complete uh, course on the monocolumn structure, just like this. So this is a three-story building carried by a single column. So we are going to be carrying out the modeling. And before the modeling, we first of all import the grid lines from AutoCAD into the total structure. And then we carry out the modeling of this structure, we load this structure. We are going to analyze the structure, design the structure, check the members to ensure that they passed design successfully. After which, we will produce the drawings of this uh, mono column structure successfully. So, stay tuned, stay connected. And then for the working file, you will check the link in the description of this video to be able to download to follow up this uh, training course successfully. And so, before we actually start it, I will also let us know that this is product structure 2021 version. Okay, you can use 2018 as well. You can use any other version that you have. So, let us get started. So, I will have to minimize this. And there is the structure, right? Just like this. Okay, so at first, we'll be creating a new project. So, I will click on new right there. And then, I'll click on new project. So in the new project, we will be dealing with Euro code. So we have a single columns, Pro 2, or we have it to be Pro 3, just like this. Okay. Click on the OK option. So they will see, we create an Euro code template project for us successfully. Just like this. Now we are good to go. We'll be diving into AutoCAD. So we can import it to, to the grid lines of the monocolor structure into product structure successfully so here we have the 2d drawing so it is just like this okay the length right there we have it to be 8 meter by 8 meter right so from one green lines to another is 4 meters okay so at first we want to look at the origin of the coordinate system so you keep in our uh, and enter and then you keep in zero right there tap key zero again and enter so we'll be able to trace the origin so just click anywhere so you can see the line right there so i write the grid lines and then we are going to move it so to the origin right there okay just like this the reason why we are doing it is because we will need this like to appear at the origin in the protest structure environment so that's why i bring it to the origin of uh, autocad so having this done like this we select it again w on the keyboard enter right there okay so we have a limiter as an instruction unit you click to navigate to where we set this and we are be saving it to desktop right there let's give it a name as Rota mono one all right just like this on the desktop and then the format is not going to be dwg you have to change file type to dsf which is dsf 230 i'll be considering so I click on the save right there and click on the ok options so it is saved to the desktop so let us get back to proper structure so we can import it successfully all right so yeah we, we need to import that so we come to the dsf import click right there so in this provisions we, we just have to reset layers and then Sign layers, reset it again, come back to load DSM file, and then we'll navigate to the desktop right there. So we'll be able to look at program mono one, this one, click on open right there. So we see our green lines being checked, we see the columns as well being checked successfully. Click on import right there. So import is in progress, and import is done. So click on closed over here. This is what we have. You can see we have C1. Okay, the diameter is 1400, all right? 1400 is the diameter, all right? So now, we have a grid line. The first thing is we have to rename the grid lines, okay? So the horizontal, the horizontal grid lines are going to be in the alphabetical. For the horizontal grid line, this one, okay? This one, one, two, three, this one is going to be alphabetical, right? A, B, C, okay? So let's name that. Just like this, you can highlight all of this. Okay, between a window, so you right click and click on it property. So in the property dialog, you have A3 right there. 
So it is going to be A right there. So it is going to be uh, B. Okay, just like this. And so on. You will notice we are not seeing the rest of that. So you have to close this first and zoom it close so you can see this other three. Align it again. Property right there. So we have A2 to be a C. Okay. Then A6 to be S6 to be D and E right there. Alright, so we have A, B, C, D and E, which is numerical, which is alphabetical. Okay, so this other vertical green line is going to be numerical, which is one, two, three, and four. Okay, so A5 right there is going to take one, A1 is going to take two. And A7 is going to take 3 right there, just like this. Okay. Again, we will look at the columns we have. Okay. So we if I click and click on the property. Uh, let's check this column sections. We want to check it. Change it to uh we have a 1000 right there. Okay. Then click on the okay options and update it. So one 1000 diameter. Okay. Close that. Alright, so at this point we want to be setting the stories. Okay, so we come over to where we have a storage right there. Right click, you can also pass through these permissions to insert your stories. Okay, so at the first story, we have it as three meters. So we click on insert story right there. So we have up to four stories. Okay, click on the OK options and yes options. So now we want to edit this story. Come to this story, edit. So we have a two three meter story. Okay, so the structural system is ROC or true. And also the foundation depth, we will leave it at uh, 1000 millimeter. Okay, because uh, we will be considering uh, uh, either tile foundations or we use raft on deep foundations for the design successfully. Okay, so having done with these settings, click on the OK options. Alright, so at this point, we are at story 4. Let's navigate back to story 1. So at the story 1, now we want to start to model the beams. So we click on the modeling tab right there. But by then, let's save this project. Click on save options to save the project. Have we saved the project? Click on the beam right there. So for the beam depth, we will be considering 600 for the first story. 600 millimeter by 250 right there okay so we will start to insert the beams just like this you pick from this point and take it all the way to this point and place it just like this so you see it is a cantilever beam okay that is where you see a small triangular symbol okay so this is a cantilever beam so this is how we insert it Alright, so this is how the beams is going to be. Okay, so at the edge of the beams, we also end up having another beam just like this of the same depth. Alright, so we have something of this kind. So we escape that. Close this uh, beam dialog. Right, so we'll be placing the place for the first concrete slab. So we click on the slab right there, and then we'll have a slab thickness of 150 millimeters. Right, the copper is going to be 25 millimeters. You come to where you have the load, okay? So we have a dead load of a uh, two kilonewton per square meters additional dead load, okay? And then we have the impost load, so we are going to be selecting impost load for. A commercial structure, so we'll be using a 2.5 kilo newton per square meters. All right, so for the roof load, we are not at the roof level, so we ignore that. So we start to place the, the first concrete slab so just like this. All right, after which, click on the close options. There is no additional slab load, otherwise, we will have exact it. Okay, so now if you get to the 3D, you'll see what you've done so far. You will notice you have this okay so this is the first floor mind you 
in the image you see right there you will notice that there is no provision for staircase because this particular mono structure is being attached to another structure so you know the entrance is through this structure all right so there will be no provision for any access to this structure all right within this structure region except through this other structure that is how it was actually carried out but we are considering only this one for now so that is why you will not see any staircase access all right i believe that is taken so we proceed at this point we will have to navigate to the next story okay you know we created up to story four so we are at story one now okay so we can't actually get to story two right there all right at story two we will be having to we have to place a columns so we can do that right there with 3d okay so we go to the column options right there and then we will select these columns and then we are going to be using the rectangular columns all right a column of 300 by two to five just like this okay so after which click on the ok options so we want to start to place the column just like this from here so you have something of this kind all right so let's continue to place that just like this Okay, so this is how it's going to be, all right? So what we just have to do now, we need to generate the all of this to the next story, okay? But before then, we can add a wall load right here. So I'm select here, right click, and then to the drop down menu, select to edit the wall load. So we will be having a unit weight to be three point. Four eight right there. Then the height of the wall is going to be three meters. The wall thickness is going to be two two five right there. Zero point two to five millimeters. So this place is going to be seven instead of eight. Okay. So the unit weight of block, including the plastering and the finishing, this of this uh, three point three seven kilometer per square meters. So we have this load on the wall right there so we'll be creating our windows on this wall okay let's say we had one windows right there just at the center so we have the window width to be 1200 and then the height which is the edge is going to also be 1200 just like this okay so we'll click on the okay options and okay so we have something of this kind so this we are going to be copying this wall load so we can distribute it to the other provisions so we right click on that and then select copy wall load this one and then come over here to story one and then expand this select the first key body shift key select the last one to get all selected right click and then you can now paste the copying the wall load successfully with the openings all right so you notice that the beams in the internal wall is not supposed to carry any it's not supposed to carry wall load okay so what you just do is you get them selected just like this then if i click you see an option of delete wall load just options so you delete this one as well delete wall options yes options okay just like this okay All right so having done this now we are good to go so we are now going to generate this story one successfully to the next story so we have to select everything we have here just like this So we can select 
هو وطعم على ستوري 1 نافيجيت تو ستوري 1 رايد يا ام جيت تو دي كلاون فيو ستوري 1 جوست لايك ذيس افتر ويتش يو جيت اول اوف ذيس سيلكتد جوست لايك ذيس افتر هافين ذا سيلكتد سيلكتد اجين از ذا سيلكتد and then you will get to do the set out story operations and come to general story so we are taking this from story 1 to story 2 right there and then you click on ok and yes options then close this let's see what is being generated successfully so we have this right all right so so let's proceed to generate from story let's proceed to generate from story 2 to the rest of the stories okay so what we are going to do now is we will navigate to story 2 right there which is where we are enable the plan view of that the story 2 you notice we have our columns here okay we have our columns here at the story 2 just like this okay so we select we wouldn't need to select let's just generate it because we are generating the whole objects at story to to the rest of the stories successfully okay so at this point what we have to do come over here click on generate story so we are not selecting because we are generating from story 2 to story 3 and as well as story 4 so we have to hold the control key to be able to select multiple of the stories and the target stories and here is the source stories so we include every structural element in those two stories we are going to be populated click on the ok options to get the two stories populated just like this okay so the process is completed click on the close options so you have something of this kind all right so at this point now we are going to be removing this one load and this story so you just get that selected and right click then come over to where you have delete one or two options yes options to get rid of that okay so this is the structure of the model successfully all right so the next thing we are going to be doing with this is we want to be reducing the beam depth okay so the beam depth from story two we are supposed to reduce it to 450 all right from story two we will reduce it to 450 so we are at story four now which is the roof level so at this level we will select all of the beams just like this right click and then click on a property right so in the beach property you will notice the depth is 600 and then uh, the width is 250 so we check the depth of the beam and then we will reduce it to 450 at the roof level or we can even use 350 right there click on the ok options so it's going to change just like this so we're not having this we 350 give step okay so now we get back to story 3 double click right there and expand this beam select the first one or the shift key select the last one right click click on it property instead of 600 at this level are 450 beam depth right so it's changed successfully click on close to right there so for the story 2 you will navigate to that story to expand the beam options select the first one and then do the control key or the shift key select the last one right click property we also change the beam depth here yeah, to 450 okay options all right so click on close all right so we are done with the beams Okay, so this brings us to the first sections of this uh, course. We are going to be considering the second section of this course. So don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So let us proceed. In the second section, uh, we will be considering the loading combinations. We will enable that to all the rest of the settings, all right, and then we will as well set our soybean capacity.
okay in these sections and we will check this structure modeling check if the modeling is okay right so let us proceed so at first we will get to the loading options right there then we click on the load cases and combinations so we come to over to our loading generator so we click on that and then we will enable the vertical load combinations for the structure okay this structure actually is being built not in an open field so we may not necessarily allow it for horizontal loadings which is the wind loading so we click on the ok options to generate the loading combinations okay according to the error codes okay after which click on the ok options all right so after having done that the next thing we do is to save this project So having saved the project, let us proceed to save the materials. So we we'll go to the analysis options, click on the building analysis. So here we have our material options, and then we have also project parameters options. So let's get to project parameters. So these are the codes that we are using for this design. So successfully click on the foundations. So allowable stress of soil. Okay, we will take that to be just hundred, right? Kilometer per square meters. So and in case here yeah, you have to fill in the project header, so you made by, check by, and the rest of that you fill in in these provisions. It's part of the uh, settings before analysis. Okay, click on the OK options. After which we have done these options with the loading combinations. Okay, so for the wheel load, we are not necessarily applying wheel load to the structure because we did not enable the horizontal loadings. Okay, so click on the edit material. So once you click on the edit materials, we want to edit uh, this material, the concrete strength we'll be using is um, we'll be using concrete strength C2025 is strength. Okay, so we apply this to all of the structural members successfully. Click on the OK options. Okay, it's been applied. Then for the steel strength, we'll be using steel strength 460, which is type 2, and this we applied to all of the structural elements successfully. Click on OK just like this okay so concrete columns diameter of uh, river so we may not consider 12 column we may not we consider 16 we consider 20 we consider 25 and then we get out of a uh, 32 just like this for the ROC columns okay we do not have wall in this structure so we are not going to make any changes to this we have beams so for beams we still select 16 16 we have 20 we have 25 and then we get rid of 32 right there click on the ok options right then for the ROC slab okay we will have uh 10 right there we will also have 12 and we will have 16 for ROC slab so the program is going to select the suitable the suitable reverse diameter okay so for the links we will be having uh we will not have 8, we will have 10 right there, and then we will have 12. Okay, so the program will select either the two. So click on OK options, come to the foundations. So at the foundations, we will be considering these provisions. We are using 60 for 60 right there. Click on the OK options. All right, then come to the diameter of the river. So just like this, we are okay with this river. Okay, the minimum is 60 for the diameter of the uh, foundation rebounds okay click on ok options and then ok the links we have already sent in the other provision so we only touching it over here right click on the ok options so we have done with the settings of the materials right click on the ok options so after which we have to save the project again so click on the save to save the project Alright, so at this point, after having saved the project, we want to audit the rebars that we have selected for this structure. Okay, so for us to audit the rebars, we will come to settings right there. So in the setting dialog, we can first of all we have to check the uh the beams rebars, very important. Okay, come to where your parameters. So you can see over here, say the beam steel bar is choosing 12, and what we did not select. What we did not select is what we see in here, meaning the selection we did will not be uh, implemented. Okay, so we have to click on the OK options and then get back to this provision again. We go and check this to ensure that this is set to what we selected. All right, so this was reset on its own. We selected 16, 20, 
with five okay this is what we selected click on ok options for the for the beams right for the beams then for the horizontal columns we have also 16 20 and 25 okay options then for the links we have 10 and 12 only okay options then for the house slab we have 10 12 and 16 all right click on okay all right that is uh, consigned for now we we'll grab any foundation for now click on the okay options and close this now let's get back to settings here come to this parameter so we select here now so you cannot see it's being you know being taken so we check the minimum to be 16 and then the minimum maximum to be 25 all right then for the links the minimum will be then the maximum will be 12 okay so these settings are quite very important you have to do it first if not if not you will have an issue issue with your beam failings because if the minimum and the maximum is not properly selected your beam may not necessarily be able to select the first main diameter so we get back to these provisions we have this lab revamp design so over here everything is fine okay so we can choose to say show number of bars in the bar level and all of that so these are the three settings we have to do okay for the column we don't have anything much over here we don't have anything much to set over here for the columns but let's just go through it okay so everything is fine with this okay so we'll come to the foundations right there so for the foundations so this is majorly for pad foundations okay it's majorly for pad foundations but we are not considering pad foundations so we are not going to make any changes here click on the ok options to get right up here all right so now we will get back to analysis so we can check the project so come to bidding analysis and then click on the bidding check so we start the check to see if there's any error in this modeling so fortunately we have no error here so click on the close options and then we click on close here all right so we will need to save the project again we have to save the project again so we have done all the necessary uh things we need to do on the project the auditing so we save the project click on save options the idea all right so let's for instance we needed to apply it we load to this structure what we need to do we go to the modeling sorry the loading over there loading combinations right there and then come to loading generator right there and after we come to horizontal and uh, horizontal load combinations choose this reloading these options click on the ok options all right so after having that added click on the ok again then come to the wind and story loads so over here there is a an automatic wind calculator here okay so you have to come to the wind load calculator right there so what is required there that's very important is the basic wind speed in meter per seconds okay at the construction site so once that is taken take it on 35 okay meter per second so once that is taken you can also consider the terrains and the surroundings okay and feed it in here so right uh, we also have the structural properties okay so the structural building categories is where first concrete structure if it is a steel structure you select this if it is composite structure you select that and the rest of that options right there okay so after which you can create the wind load calculation reports right here okay once click here right so just click on apply it here so this living load is being applied automatically on this structure successfully okay so we click on the okay options so now this structure is now having a wind load being calculated based on the height of the structure all right again before we proceed into analysis of this structure we will be we will be saving the project so we click on save again to save this project the next thing is to run analysis but if you notice we are having a reference concrete slab at the roof level right there so if you really want to use a uh, reinforced concrete slab for the roof you just have to select all of that just like this okay so let's also remove that because we will be using a wooden a wooden structure or a steel, structure, a steel uh, members for the roof so we have to take the slab right there okay okay to get it right okay 
out there okay so at this point we will have to save the project again so we have to be very so sure you always save your projects all right we will be proceeding into the analysis of the structure so we get to the analysis tab right there we we'll go to the building analysis okay so at this point we have already checked the structure we'll get straight away to analysis options right there we've checked the structure just as i said earlier so we're going to be analyzing the structure so we click on the building analysis right there so we, we want the program to design the columns analyze and design the columns analyze and design the beams okay just like this right so we really want it to be selected by it should use the bar that we selected successfully for the analysis and designs of structural elements successfully so we click on the building analysis so we, we have to give the program some uh, time to carry out the analysis and as well as design of all the structural elements successfully All right, so now the analysis summary report. Okay, the story draft satisfy the limit. You can see so the related story draft puts in the uh, direction one and two satisfy the limit. Right, so analysis is done. Click on OK options so over here. Build analysis successful. We did not have any error in this analysis. Take note. All right, so click on the close options right there, and then you come over here. Close there, by the way. All right, so this is what we have. Okay, we have this. All right, so. You want to enable the displacement. This is the analytic model, all right? So you can enable the displacement. So you see, here is the displacement for the monocolor structure. So you can see the way it is, all right? Now we'll add the moment, the moment diagrams, all right? Want we'll to check eliminations? You can always check eliminations, just like this. Okay. All right. So we have done with the analysis successfully let's get back to let's start this animation let's get back to the ready right there okay so this brings us to the second to the end of the second sections of this uh, presentations of course so the third sections is going to be the foundation design okay it's going to be the foundation design all right so for the foundation designs we are going to be using the raft foundations okay raft foundations floating raft foundations so what we will be doing is we will have to navigate to the story zero right there okay because if we try to use part foundation here it's going to fail it's going to fail and then you will not be able to get what you actually wanted because of the load that is coming onto the foundations okay so part you will not be able to withstand it okay so you can also use pile foundations you can also use pile foundations, but you can choose between the pile foundations and the floating raft foundation, which will be cost effective. So any that is cost effective, you can actually adopt that uh, foundation system. So I prefer using the uh, floating raft foundation because that will be cost effective, unlike uh, pile foundations. Pile foundation will be very much expensive, right? So let's get down to the plan of the foundations. Okay, so here is the plan of the foundation. So what we're going to be considering is this. We are having 8 meters by 8 meters. So we are going to be doing a, a floating path, a floating raft. Okay, floating raft that will take the whole of that provisions. So what we need to do now is uh, we just have to navigate to the modeling. And I will click on the slab right there. Okay, the thickness we are going to be considering in this case will be considering 400. Uh, or 450. Let's try 450. If 450 failed, we may increase it. Okay. <laughs> the cover is going to be 50 right there. Right. So when it comes to loading, we use an additional load of uh, two. All right. And then we use the normal imposed load of 2.5. Right. Okay. So after which we will need to place the the raft 
it's now right there so we go to the general tab and then we'll be using instructions method so we be using picking axis all the pick point to instruct to be snap successfully so we pick here as the first point second point third point first point you see it instructed here like this so this is not what we actually wanted all right so let's just close this and then get right on this we want to do a slab over the whole area of the uh, structure okay so we'll get back to this position so again change here to 450 all right come over here we have two there and then here will be 2.5 all right get back to general instruction this time and i will use pick axis method okay pick axis method so we pick here as axis one sorry axis three right there pick axis d pick axis one right there okay so you see when you are picking it you see it you see it showing it over here okay so here you pick axis p and get back to axis three again to insert the uh, rough slab just like this okay so close here yeah. So you cannot see it in 3D and then you have it to be something of this kind. Okay. So here is the rough slab right here. Okay. So what we now have to do is uh, where we need to get back to the plan view again. So we are going to be drawing slab strips okay, in both uh, vertical and horizontal directions, which is the X and the Y directions successfully. So come to the slab strips. So in this slab strips right there, you have uh, the general tab right there. So over general, you have the FE strips. Okay, so this is a FE finite element analysis of the floating raft. Okay, we'll be doing all right. So you come to you come to FE. Okay, come on the FE. You this options this option this one. Okay, so now we'll be drawing the strips in the in either directions. So you have to get back to general to be able to see you know, the direction you are. So we are in the X directions. Okay, yeah. So we are going horizontal, all right? So we'll pick this point and take it all the way to this point. So we have our strips, okay? So we need to expand this bit so it touches the edge, okay? Of the rough slab successfully. So we pick this point and then pick this edge, all right? Click on the object to expand it to that point. Pick here again and pick this edge and then I'll click on the object to expand it here, okay? So after which we will be going in the Y directions. Uh, if you want to be trained, you can also contact us. You can have a personal training, an intense training with you, we train you on this program. Okay, for we are experts in the use of these programs and other civil engineering analysis and design software successfully. So get back to general right there. And then you select the Y, okay, meaning we gain the Y directions. So actually, the width has been set to 4 meters four meters so we really need to use this provision so just pick this first point take it to this last point and then place that which is in the particular or the y direction successfully so after you must have done with these strips just like this you have to close this dialog we through with this dialog we close it click on the close options right there so now we'll be carrying out the finite element analysis and design so before then we we'll have to save the project okay so click on the save options right there to save this project So after saving the project, we get back to the analysis tab right there. So we come to the raft, FE raft foundation analysis. This options click right there. So you have this a finite element flow analysis uh, dialog. Okay, just like this. So we include column sections. We click right there. Okay. So after which you will uh, you will have to if you click here, you can be able to set the foundations uh, material like the foundations. Uh, Rebars that you actually needed, you know, we selected this previously, so we don't have need for all of this for now. Okay, so I will select these options and these other options. Uh, consider torsions, uh, beam torsional stiffness, okay, that can be considered in the structures. Use the subgrade reactions value assigned to the slab for soil stress, okay, so you can choose that as well. So, after which, do not choose these options, okay. You can also apply life load reductions or combinations. Can apply this but you can leave it as well so you click on the raft foundation mesh and analysis right there so once you click on that if you check over here you can see preparing finite element model processing slab okay so it is actually preparing the model right away so here is the model okay
okay so you can see and the column is on it you can see column c1 so what you just need to do we need to generate a uh, model so with this uh, model element uh, specifications and sizes you can as well increase it okay but uh, the smaller this uniformity factor is the more accurate it becomes so we can go by the default click on the generate model right there so you have a model being generated just like this okay so we have generated the model all right so you just have to click on the close to transfer this to where we carry out the design successfully click on that so it's going to transfer us to the post processing and on post processing come to analysis post processing so here is a live source stress you can also make changes if you want the relative moment factors and the rest of that so we go straight away to analysis post processing click right there So here is what we have, okay? So as you can see, the steps that we drew, all right? So click on the standard contour right there to generate this standard contour just like this. So what we actually wanted is just only the standard contour. We will not consider country cover and the rest of all of this because we have set that as we have already drawn the strips right there. So if you zoom closely, you will also see the load that is actually acting on this, but there is other ways of bringing up the main load combinations that are going to come in on these uh, foundations. So you just have to click on the uh, MS, MY, and the rest of that, depending on the uh, paint moment in the directions. So we we'll click on this, so this are design goals, okay? So we are designing for the bending moment in the global direction. So we come to the bending moment in the local directions with M1, M2, M12, right? Okay, so we come to the moment, okay, using wood and armor. MD1, MD2, bottom and top, right there. All right, so the required area of steel. So this is where, if the thickness of the uh, raft is actually failing, this is where you actually see it. It will tell you it is not sufficient. So let's click on the area of steel in the bottom. One directions, bottom two directions, everything is okay. So if you come in the key here, you can see the area of steel selected right there. Okay, this is around 4,000 something. Okay, 4,000 something. Uh, Four hundred something square meters, millimeters square square meters, right there. Okay, so we we'll come to the top and top two. So everything is fine. If if there is any uh, problem, it will show you that yes, the sections of the slab is insufficient. Okay, so we we'll come to the area still required using a, a wood and armor. So you click right there. We we'll go to the bottom two directions, top. Two directions right so everything is fine now with this selection so since everything is fine you can proceed to get back to actually reduce the thickness of the raft maybe to 400 and try it again if it passes you can reduce to 300 and try it again okay so by so doing you are reducing the volume of country you are supposed to use for the constructions okay so come back to the soil pressure okay so we click on that so based on the soil bearing capacity we have actually put there Okay, so if uh, this is actually greater than this, it will see it's showing us warning over there. There are warning because of the soil that we keep in right there. So you see, this is okay at this point. It is okay. All right, so you see 67, 67.342 less than 125. Okay, so there are 100 we put, you use it to multiply by the factors of safety of uh, 1.5, which gives us 125. Okay, so any point that the soil is greater than 125, okay is assumed to be weak okay it's assumed to be weak or failing all right so that is how this is being you know being uh, checked successfully so now we have done click on the soil trace hole right there to get that you can also transfer this contour if you wish to export the contour click on export right there all right so if you click on export click on okay this has been exported which i will show you maybe in the later sections where you can get that export successfully so but at this point we are done with the design of the raft so what we need to do is just to click on close right there to close this and then it asks us to transfer slash strips for fe analysis user click on okay so this will take some few time to transfer the fe for the analysis user successfully so now we see the analysis is completed if you check this analysis completed successfully 
So you are still only post processing and to report. So you can transfer a foundation bin if you are doing right from bin foundations. But in this case, we are not doing right from bin foundation. So we just have to close this right there. So having closed this now, we are done with uh, everything, the, the analysis and design of the foundation. So what we need to do is to generate the reinforcement. Okay, for this. So for you to generate the reinforcement, you just have to head over to update uh, steady bars. All right? Head over to update the uh, steady bars right there. So if you click in this position now, you can see the steady bar is being generated. So if you zoom closely, you can actually see the steady bars here. This is still okay at 2 to 5. Okay, in both of the directions. So you can see it's being generated successfully over here. So you can see the length. Right, and the river and it is top and bottom. All right, that is being generated. Okay, so we are done with this foundations. If you navigate to the 3D, all right, so you can see how everything is now. Look, the foundation design is done successfully. This steel bus is being selected successfully. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this section. In the next section, we will be considering how to audit the beams. Okay, we bars that has been designed and then we produce the drawings for this uh, monocolon structure just like this. So we continue with auditing and optimizing the beams and the column system of this uh, monocolon structure successfully. But before then, I will want us to actually. Uh, understand how to enable the contour we actually generated when we were designing the uh, floating raft foundation for this structure. And also, I will take us through on how we can actually be able to enable the loadings that actually generated from this structure to the foundation successfully. All right, so for us to you know carry out and reflect the contour on the foundation, we will have to actually navigate to the uh, plan view of the story zero right there. This one, okay. So if you zoom closely, you can see the rebars we generated. This is spanning in both directions, top and bottom, all right, because it is a floating raft for these foundations, all right. So we navigate to uh, the display options, okay, and then we we'll go to the visual interrogations. In the visual interrogations, let's uh, move this dialog to this uh, provisions, all right. Then I will go to where I have FE contour. Okay, this is finite element contour. So it was the soil pressure we actually save. So if you click right there and click on OK, right, it is it is now showing us the you know the soil pressures uh, key. Okay, at various uh, points. All right. So if you go over there and click on the visual interrogation again, and if you want to deactivate that, what you just have to do is uh. You will just have to click on the none right there. Okay, see it is it is it's been disappeared. All right, so this is how it is deactivated. Okay, right thing we will be looking at right there is uh, the column display. On that column display, we needed to know the axial load that actually comes to the foundation. So you have to check here. After having that provision check, come in the uh, this loading uh, drop down menu. So you can choose the dead load. You can choose the life load. If you scroll down, you see the Unfactored load combinations. This one is unfactored load combinations. So if you click on OK options and then click on the uh, OK over here, if you come over here, you can see the load is this is dead load, all right? And this is the unfactored dead load, all right? And the uh, unfactored uh, dead load and as well as the live load successfully, okay? Is this a uh, CMB1, all right? So uh, this is the load that is being used for the foundation design successfully. So I'll only show you how to actually. Uh, Take a look at this or display this, okay, in case of necessity, all right? So let's get rid of that. So I will navigate to the inter visual interrogations and then get to the column again. I will have to deactivate that. We don't have need for that for now. But that is quite necessary when you are designing PI foundations. Maybe in one of the uh, presentations, we'll look at PI foundations because those load are very, very necessary, okay? So I will deactivate that as well. The axial load, click on the OK options. At this point, when I get to the 3D right there, so we have to audit the structural members. We start from the uh, structural columns, right, at the story one. So click on the column right there, right click, and then click on this uh, reinforced concrete column, active story. So you see the major columns right there, okay, that's carrying the whole structure, which is the 
and columns of diameters 1000 millimeters right here so if you want to check the rebars in it just have to get it selected and then click on the inter interactive design right there so this is how this column is being designed successfully you click on the interactive design right there it tell you we have a 15 t25 okay t25 25 is the diameter of the rebars okay 15 of that okay in this column successfully click on the okay options and then okay options so you can see the column is being designed successfully and it has passed design all right there is the links you can see the links diameter is t10 all right so click on the close option now let's look at the beam at this level you right click and then click on the uh rc beam at the story so all of the beam has been designed successfully if you check any of this beam you will notice that uh, this beam has been designed successfully all right okay so i uh, will be taking us on some of the beams uh there are some that are not actually uh, we design, I will tell you what to do concerning that. Okay, so this beam at this floor has been well designed and edited successfully. So I'll close this, navigate to the second floor to check the column as well as the beam. So I will select the column at the second floor and then the active. Okay, so if you check all of this, it has been designed, but only this one that is not designed, this one has fair design. So you select it, click on interactive design. So you have this, we we'll send the bars, click on interactive design over here. So you can see the one right there, still back cannot be selected section size is insufficient okay so this is what we're having click on the okay option so how do you resolve that you have to increase sections right there let's say we will look at this uh, 2 to 5 you change it to 250 right there to increase the sections okay so in most cases when you have such a, a warning you have to increase the section just as i've done now click on the update first to have it affect the main sections right there then reset the bars click on the interactive design right there so you can still see yeah, it, it, they said it's exceeded, the steel ratio limit is exceeded, click on the OK options, alright? So in this case now, you are still required to increase the sections of this uh, uh, of this particular uh, column. So let's make 220, 320 right there in that uh, uh, B1, then B2 will be 250, click on update right there. Okay, reset this and then interactive design again, so you have this exceed again, click on the OK. Now what you're going to do is... Try to change here to Y25, change here to Y25 as well. Okay, so once we're done with those changes, this one can be Y16. All right, you will notice that this will actually pass this design because over here it is showing me the addition ratio is 0.98. All right, so if you click on the updates right there and then you can click on the active design, you still have it that issue. So most of the time we do have an issue of this kind. But uh, let's increase the section to 350 by 250. Update this, okay? Design again. So you see now it has passed design. You have 1625 of this uh, particular uh, steel bars, okay? So click on the OK options with these sections 350 by 250. All right, click on the OK again. Sorry, it was cancelled. All right, that is a mistake. We do make mistakes sometimes. So over here, all what we did was cancel. What we're having here is. Um, we have 350 here, okay, we now have a 250 over this side, like this, just like this, okay, click on the updates right there, and then interactive design, so to have T1625, click on the OK options, and click on OK again, so you can see everything is being designed successfully, let's close this now, we navigate to the third story right there, let's check the ROC columns right there, so uh, some of the arrest column has passed, some has failed. So this one that has failed now, interactive design of that, okay? Updates here, interactive design, okay, exceeded. So choose 250 right here, all right? As the sections in the B part, then in the in the B2 part, the B1 part should remain 300, update, and then reset the bars, and then interactive design. So this has passed 6025, click on the OK options, and then OK again, all right? To have that pass, the same thing applicable to this, all right? So Let's just increase this 250 right there, just like this, by 300 interactive design. This one is exceeded, all right? At this point, you can just make here 320 right there. Click on the update right there, all right? Reset the bars and interact it 625 as well. Click on the OK options, all right? So this is the objective or the optimizations of the reinforced concrete columns we will do it okay so all of this has been done successfully all right due to time so let's uh, get right of that okay 
for the beams right click right there click on the receive beam artist story so we have two beams here we are going to be optimizing so click on interactive design right there so you click on yes options right so you actually notice this uh so actually this is what you have uh at first after your analysis and design you have something like this so you have to select the top bar and then uh, lap it up right there and then lap it this other way just like this okay so you can as well increase the uh the numbers of t bars okay as well as the diameter by using this a uh, small arrow okay in both sides all right so you see over here we are having almost everything as part design choose this to second layer so that it will be like a support bar at the uh, column okay so you have something of this kind so everything is good but even at this if you come here and change the flexions the flexion is failing right there so why is this flexion failing the flexion is failing due to the depth okay the depth is too small so we have to increase the depth of this beam to be able to cut out for these deflections successfully so now that we have actually selected and set the river successfully just like if you click on the ok option you still notice the beam still is failing because deflection is failing all right it's not a second lever beam all right so deflection is actually failing all right so what we need to do, come over to where your beams right there so here is the beams and this is how it's being connected to the columns right here you can see all right so at this point come over to where you have 450 as the depth of the beam change it to 600 right there and then this other one you change also to 600 right here just like this and then don't click on the ok option here all right click on interactive design okay after which click on ok and go back to the reverse okay so once you go back to the river i see it has cut for the deflection that has been showing rate all right now deflection is okay everything is fine all right with this beam now click on the ok options the same thing applicable to this beam just click and then be able to click on yes options to see if the program can actually modify to some extent and then you have to lap these beams uh, bar lap it to the columns all right just like this so for this one it is going to be a support bar so you make it a second layers just like this so you can increase this to four and four or this should be three t25 and then change it to three t25 as well so you can actually optimize your rebars here successfully depending on what you actually wanted and what we actually able to carry the cantilever because this cantilever is about five meters there about okay so even this is also filling at deflection so you can see the flexion check is showing right so you have to get to the beams again and increase the depth of the beams successfully just as we did just like this all right so having done that successfully click on the therapy design and okay get back to the reverse right there so deflections has been you know check corrected okay so click on the OK option. So we are done with these beams. Everything is fine now, all right? So click on the close options right there. And then we get to the last floor, which is story four. On that floor four, we have our columns right there. So we go to the active story, we have two here, the active designs, and then just check it out to see, okay, uh, still ratio limits exceeded. So what you just need to do is uh, just increase this uh b part to b2 part to you know 250 right there just like this and then update it all right click on try to design so you see now you have 60 25 right click on the okay everything has passed and okay again all right the same thing will be applicable to this provisions all right interactive design right there first interact and see if it will pass is exceeded so increased the b2 part to uh 250 right there all right 250 so just have to be careful to keep in the right value right there updates okay and then interact so you still have 60 25 okay all right so click on the okay options all right so we are done with the ROC column at that floor so close this all right so we go back to the beams at that floor and then active story we have only one beam that is giving us issue right there so interact that beam optimize it click on the yes options and then lap all of this top bar all right also lap this other top bar just like that okay so if you check here nothing is showing red you can increase the bar uh diameter right to 25 right just like this 325 of that you see the thickness of the beams is uh the depth of the beam is 250 right so it's quite small over here we're having 325 so just change this to second layer because it's a support bar all right, so we are still having the flexion issue in this beam. So having the flexion issue with this beam, we require that to increase the, you know, the beam uh, 
debt so for my yeah, instead of 350 just take it to 500 right there and then yeah we have to 500 as well as the debt okay so click on the interactive is an okay option get back to the rebars again the cutters and correct it to the deflections failure successfully right so click on the okay options so now we are done with all of our, our designs successfully so you can now see that we have a uh, audited and optimized all the structural members everything is good now all right at this point we will be proceeding into the next sections of uh, this uh, course all right we are going to be producing the structural drawings of this uh, project but before then i want to take us to the fastest way the fastest way you can be able to actually you know get your staircase design okay but in this structure you notice as i said earlier there is no staircase because there are other structures being attached to this structure all right so the staircase is right through the other structure okay so let us dive into the fastest way you can actually get your staircase uh design successfully in case of uh if you're having a structure where you're duplexed and then you need to design this area staircase all right so let's say for instance here is autocad we are designing this staircase okay so in this case uh we are going to be using a software that is called uh kc soft all right so this is kc soft software all right it is basically for staircase design so once you click double click and launch it like this all right so let me take you to where you launch it so that you actually know the process of uh you know launching it successfully so here is the cases of software all right the link to that download the software is in the description of this video all right so once you download it select it right click and then you click on extract so once you extract you get it just like this okay in a folder so now what you need to do copy this folder right away and take it to the document so in this document you have to just paste this folder in this document so you have this folder here in this document all right so once you double click on this uh kc soft package version 22 and you have an applications yeah double click on the application so you get the mail software uh file all right double click on it to launch the, the software file just like this okay so here is the interface where we actually uh met last time okay so at this point click on enable content so once you click on enable content you can see staircase options here this other options is basically for design of uh, footings design of columns design of beams but uh, they are coming up with uh, uh, those options being function effectively. But for now, it is the staircase that is functioning effectively. So you click on the staircase right there. So once you click on the staircase, you have a two type of a staircase right here. Okay. You can use the design a straight flight. So if I click on the straight flight, so here is the straight flight staircase, right? The case is soft. Okay. So you can key in all your, you can key in all the names of the clients, you can key in the names of the person that check the, the project and the rest of that and then key in the parameters all right for the uh after all right for the stretch flight sorry this is stretch flight this is stretch flight so you can key in all of the parameters right there and be able to design it successfully if you want to get back home you can click on this get back home after which you can also click on the analysis all right and then once you click on the analysis this is going to generate analysis analysis results okay i'm using the default uh parameters so from this analysis card is what i'm going to click on this dsf to really generate the drawings of this staircase successfully for instance i click on this now it's going to take me back to autocad and generate the drawing of this stretch flight uh staircase just like this so this is the fastest software you can use the link is in the description of this video you can always uh, download it right there and use it for a staircase design so after you've done it your design here is your report okay the calculation sheet all right for this straight flight successfully you can get back there okay and also get back to the stair tab and then you'll be able to select any other stair that you are actually using in your structure you have it after if i select it off after this how it is okay and also we can get back there and be able to open uh, this other type of staircase which is the open well stair which looks like this okay so this can also design an open way stairs all right so once you key into your the stair geometry right here all right you select all your figures by the time you click on this now i'm using the default input all right the default parameters so within default parameters is going to draw the staircase for you automatically if i click on the analysis and design the design has been done and here is the 
uh, analysis and design a uh, report right there. Click on DSF. So it is going to generate a drawing of the staircase just like this so you can see it right here. So this have saved you time of, uh, you know, it's going to detect everything just like this, okay, for you for successfully. So this is for the open world staircase, right? Let's minimize this and get back. Then we look at the default, uh, the default parameter for the afton. So once you key in, you'll be a riser, your trade, okay, the waste and the numbers of stairs and the rest of that, you'll be seeing the changes here, all right? So I just want to introduce you to this uh, software, okay, which I believe it will help you to design your staircase very fast and easy, all right? So after which, you can click on the analysis right there, and then it's most clear analysis, you can always have your calculations right here, and then if it is actually failing by deflections, you see deflections not okay, which may include the waste of the staircase. Right, or cut out the deflections and correct it successfully. But with the default parameters, everything is okay. Click on the DSM to join your staircase successfully. So, this is how it works. Right, this one is for after. So, we have successfully generated a calculation sheet for the you can see over here. We have a stretch flight where we designed and generated the drawing successfully for the staircase. You see the open web right here. We also designed and generated the, st uh, the stairs uh, drawings. Right, and then the after as well, we designed and generated the drawing successfully. So, this staircase is, is very fast, the fastest staircase uh, software you can use, to, uh, you know, for your staircase design successfully. Get the link in the description of the video and get the staircase, and also you will be happy to have it successfully. All right, so at this point, let's get back to Prota Structure so that we start to generate the drawings of the structural elements that we have designed successfully. So, here we go. So for us to do that, you know, actually we have optimized all of the structural elements, okay? So for the drawings, before we proceed, you have to save the project, so you click on the save option right here to get the project saved successfully. So having saved the project, we will navigate to our drawings and report right here, okay? My this is Prola Structure 322, so we click on the product detail right there to generate the reverse first concrete drawings of this uh, structure successfully, click right there. So once you click there, it is going to uh, boot up successfully and then launch the product detail uh, interface where yeah, we can be able to carry out the you know drawings generation of uh, all of these structural elements successfully. So this is product detail 2021 versions, all right. So we give it some seconds to launch just like this, okay. Most of the times it takes more time to boot up, so it is up now. You can see, all right. So you can actually generate your drawings by Actually, generate your drawings by uh, you can you can generate your drawings by auto generate details. Okay, you can also generate your drawings by you know by creating a new drawings. Okay, so let's go by auto generate details. Click in the options, and then a dialog will come up just like this. So these are the you know members you are going to be generated. All is being checked successfully. The stories from story zero to story four, right, and then the rest of the structural elements. Right there, okay. So we look at this screen here as well as to 50. Click on the draw options, and then this will take you back to the scene environment. The scene environment, you can just click anywhere in the scene environment to start generating all of the structural elements drawings successfully. Just like this, as you can see, okay. So it is going to generate all the structural elements from the foundations, from the beams, the, the columns, all right. So the details. Is being generated just like this, as you can see. So, here is the drawings being generated. These are the beams, all right. So, for me, the way I normally do it is um, it's, uh, we norm I normally uh, so you can see the beams, those beams is 750 depth for uh, the you know, the story one, okay. You can see the way it looks, everything looks great, all right. So, if you want to actually know this, uh, generate the beams story by story. You can still come over to where you have by uh, story beams elevations drawings right there expanded so you can see story one right there so if you select this now right click and then click on the draw beams elevations one by one or draw beams elevations so you click on these options draw beams elevations and actually click on draw right there you can see the scale is always to 25 but once you click on draw right there you will be able to generate the beams elevations for that story one so this is the beam elevations for story one so if you want to continue like that, you can continue to generate it story by story so that you will not be confused, okay? Because in the 
in the in the original one you see everything is all together you may not be able to actually separate the first story from the second story but using this method you can be able to actually separate the first story from the second story and the rest i'm just showing you how to do this so here is bad bargain this schedule is also generated successfully all right so after this you have to now export this to AutoCAD where you will now have to do a little editing on it before you publish it successfully. Another thing I want to also let us know is that you can also cut your sections right here. Okay, cut the slab sections, cut the foundations uh, sections right there. So let's go through that. And also you can also uh, contact us for a personal training where you learn more than what we have taught in this particular course. Actually, it's going to be a live training. Okay. So, if you have interest, just contact us. The link is below the descriptions of this video. All right, so we will click on the section right there. So, once you click on the section, you can click the first point right there. Over to this other point, click, click uh, hold on the shift key to have a stretch line just like this. Make sure your hand is straight, click right there, and take your sections of the foundations right there. So, you can place it on that foundations right there so you can see the sections and the rebars right there for the foundations you can close that set this applicable to the snap right there you actually cut your foundation your sections you can actually cut your sections right here so i pick the first point all the way to this other side you pick the second point and then you have your sections just like this all right so having done all of this now what we need to do is uh we have to export this to we have to export it to DSF, okay, or the WG, which is your talkout format. Okay, so select right here, right click, and then click on export. So you see the name is drawing one, and then the export autocad versions is version 10. You can choose any of these versions right there, but do not choose a version that is higher than the version you have. Alright, so that you can be able to open it. So once I click on this export, it's going to actually generate a dwg file of the whole of these drawings and open the file location for us automatically just as you can see so here is the file itself so from here you can see you can trust the directory of the file inside document Prota details sorry Prota data 2021 single color pro 3 okay export drawings all right so you will have something of this kind okay so from here you can just double click it to open it in AutoCAD, just like this Continue opening the WG. So this will break all the drawings right here, including sections that we've got. So you can see it right here. All right. So once you have got it here, for it for ease of addicting, uh, we advise you to make use of the uh project company template uh, to edit the drawings at ease. So let us look at the template. Here is the template. So uh, you have it in a zip file just like this, okay? So once you open it right there, you'll see we have a, a protect, uh, structural detailing template. This one is for uh, the beam raft foundations, okay? So if you are designing a beam raft foundations, you make use of this first one. If your structure is carrying a pad footings, you make use of this one. If your structure is, is carrying a pad foundation, you make use of this one, all right? If your structure is uh, actually are supported by the slab raft okay we make use of this one because uh, this particular uh, project we're working on the structure foundations is a uh, slab raft so this is the one we are going to be making use of and then this one is for the white strip footings all right so we have all together one two three four and five autocad files right here okay so if i get back there the link to this template is in the description of this video so you just have to download it all right once you get it downloaded select it right click and then click on extract once you extract it you have this uh folder double click on the folder and make use of any of the templates in there okay depending on your type of supported foundations in your structure okay so over here on this team we have design template too so if you are designing this structure i would advise you get this template too so that you see the order of arrangement and how to use it to effectively carry out your uh, details and editing successfully okay so i will double click on the folder right there so since we are making use of this project structural detailing template for slab raft foundations 
Okay, so we double click right there. So once you double click, it will take us to the AutoCAD. And then here is a complete drawings of a structure supported by, you know, raft, flat, uh, by, by raft, uh, a slab raft foundation. So successfully, so you can see the sections. So here is the slab raft foundation. So if you want to really get the ideas and how to actually carry out the toys and modeling analysis on your structure, you can actually join our training program and we will teach you actually the nitty gritty of how to actually detail your drawings very much well. Okay, but uh, this template is for you so you can see over here is the sections of this. Okay, this is the foundation supported by Slab Raft. Okay, and also we have some part footings that actually support most of those bigger columns with the Slab Raft, as you can see right there. So this is a complete drawings arranged in order. So this is the pen template we are going to be using to edit this uh, uh, projects right there. So this template actually have a lot to do to this project drawings that we actually uh, brought from Proto Structure. So if you check the drawing, you can look at the way the drawing is right here. If I copy any of these drawings now to that uh, project structural detailing template, you will see the changes that you actually make to those drawings successfully. So for instance, I copy this one. Let us zoom it closely. You can see the way it looks now. Right click and then come over to where you have a clipboard. Copy this, right? And then come over to the template right here. Zoom it closely. Okay. And then paste this here. Just like this. So once you paste it here, you can see the changes on these drawings now. Click for paste. So you can now see that even the rebars has added thickness. And then the text font is more visible compared to the the text font in this other drawings just like this so you can see the way this drawing is and then you see the way this one is so you can see the difference so ordinarily as you brought all the drawings in this template is going to actually edit some of these important uh, uh, aspect of your drawing so your editing now will be reduced actually to like 30 percent editing what you will do so about 70 percent has been taken care of by this template so it's advisable that you get this template okay the link to this template is in the description of this video successfully so normally what you are supposed to do is to copy all of this drawing just like this so i click and then in the drop down menu go to clipboard and then click on copy come over to the template right there enable that and then get back to where you have a model space okay so you come over right here and then the right click and you'll be able to paste this right there okay so uh, this is going to actually paste here. So once it's being pasted like this, if you come closely, you see the changes on these drawings. Very much changes on the drawings you can see. Alright, so this is what this template will actually add. If you get back there, look at the way the drawings are here. Okay, come over here, you can see the way the drawings are. So this template will actually add to you, okay, to edit your drawings. And then you follow this order of arrangement to arrange all your drawings successfully okay so i believe that uh, this is quite understood and at this point we want to bring the presentations to a stop and then we will want to advise us to actually like and subscribe to this channel if there's any question you can also drop it in the comment sections thanks for watching and stay tuned for more advanced lessons of this kind if you want to donate for us in the link there's a link in the description of this video that you can donate to our paper uh, account successfully thank you and god bless